So you've got that tough sales target to hit and you've got a few prospects lined up that you want to work with, but as a result of a few things you've done, you've suddenly turned those prospects really cold and they don't want to work with you. What are the things that we do as salespeople that sometimes turn our prospects off us? In this video, I'm going to share with you eight things that if you do, it's going to turn your prospects off you and going to make you hitting your sales target a much harder process. My name is James White. I'm the UK's leading prospect conversion expert. Let's take a look at the video and let's give some advice and tips that can help you make your number happen. So point number one that will turn your prospects off you as a salesperson is this and using it too much. I wrote a blog a couple of weeks ago around how a tele salesperson called me and it, I timed it that they spent 45 seconds just talking at me, not even allowing me to talk to them about what I do or what I'm looking for or the problems that I've got, but just someone talking at me relentlessly for that period of time. So if there's one way in which to really annoy your prospects, and that's if you continue to talk at them and talk all the time and don't use your ears rather than your mouth to listen. Prospects, of course, know that they're going to be sold to and engaged with by someone like yourself. But the skill of sales is understanding them before you talk about what you do and how you operate. Get to know their problems, get to know their challenges, get to know what's key and a priority and, and a passion for that prospect. And you can then adjust your sales approach in the right way. But if you keep talking at them, they're going to get frustrated, they're going to get annoyed, and they're going to get to the stage where they say, I can't be bothered to work with this person anymore. Point number two that I think is key in turning prospects off people is being fake with them. I see it so much of the time of salespeople that try and be something that they're not or try and pretend that they like something that they don't and the reality is it doesn't work. We've all got to develop our sales skills and the way in which we approach things but you have to be yourself. You have to be genuine, you have to be open, engaging, supportive, helpful, all those other great adjectives in order to work and get a prospect on your side. Being fake or telling them lies or telling them stories about you that aren't true is just going to make that prospect reconsider whether you're the right person to work with if they then find out that what you've told them isn't true. So don't be fake, be real, be who you are, be genuine, and you're going to be in a great position to get those prospects really liking and warming to you and then hopefully looking to buy from you. The third way in which you're going to definitely get prospects to turn off you is if you keep talking functions and not outcomes at them. How many times have you bought from whether it's a new car or a new something for the house or something for you personally? And if you get a salesperson talking around all the functions, all the clever things that it does, when really all you want it to do is solve a purpose or an outcome for you. You buy a car to get to a destination. You buy a cooker in the house to cook things. The functions of what that does, yes, sure, they may be important in some elements of the decision making, but most of the time it's about solving the outcome and the problem that the prospect has and not just talking about features and functions all day long and trying to baffle the prospect with science or things that they don't understand. Focus on the outcome that your service offers and what it will do for the prospect and how it will make their world a better place and an easier place to be. If you do that, you're going to be in a great position to get that prospect on side from you and sign in that check to work with you and your company. So the fourth way in which you're going to get prospects really getting rattled and peed off with you and your company is to tell them that they're wrong or make them feel like they're stupid. When you're selling a new service, especially if it's an innovative service that can offer something very different, that can really solve a problem that the prospect didn't think was possible to solve, the reality is it's going to take some time for the prospect to absorb what you're doing, how it works, and it's really going to make them think whether it's feasible that you could offer them the solution that you do. The reality is they know that they're on a learning path to understand more about your service and how you deliver it and how it can deliver the end results. But the key thing you can't do is make them feel stupid or make them feel small in the fact that they don't have the right knowledge or expertise in that area. The other key thing is don't indicate that they're wrong. There's this, always this thing that the customer is always right. And when you're engaging in a sales process, it's essential if a customer says something that you disagree with to maybe use the phrase, it's a great point you've made there, John. What I'd like to do is consider how we can approach it in this way. So don't go and say to the prospect, John, you're wrong. It doesn't work in that way because it's going to put a barrier up from the prospect. And if you keep doing that, it's going to make that prospect really want to consider whether they want to work with you. Don't indicate they're wrong. Don't make them feel stupid. Don't make them feel small. 
show them what you can do and how you can benefit them and give them the support, the help, the education to see what you do and how it impacts them and you're gonna be in a great position to do business with them. Point number five, and we touched upon it earlier on, but it's key when you're having that prospect discussion, is talking over someone. How many times have you been in a conversation and you're so passionate about what you have to say, I know this because I do it sometimes and it's one of the learnings I have to keep working on. And I wanna just talk to the prospect about something, but I end up talking over them. And how frustrating is it when someone talks over you and starts to talk about what you do rather than actually letting you talk and share the thoughts that you have. In sales, the key thing is to listen. The best salespeople are great listeners. They'll listen to what their prospect has to say, they'll ask the right questions, and they won't talk over the prospect. They'll let the prospect finish their conversation, maybe take a note if it's something that the prospect's mentioned, take a note down of what it is they've said, and then come back to it afterwards. But don't talk over or continually interrupt the prospect. A, you're being rude, and it's not gonna make the prospect want to work with you. But more importantly, and B, you're potentially missing out on a snippet of information, a nugget of detail that could make a massive difference in you helping you close that prospect to become a customer. So don't talk over the prospect, let them talk, let them engage with you, ask questions of you and work with you, and you're gonna find that your relationships with those prospects get better and better. Point number six is lying to a prospect. It's something I see salespeople do on a regular basis because they're so keen to make the sale happen. But I'm gonna tell you, it's the worst thing you can do as a salesperson, and that's to lie to a prospect, because the moment you tell one lie, you make all of your truths unimaginable. Yes, there are, of course there are times where you are gonna be in a position where you need to be able to find some further information out, or you may even just get something wrong. You may even get a figure wrong, a statistic wrong, a fact wrong. If you do, go back to the prospect and say to them, the information I told you, I'm sorry, I've actually checked that and that wasn't correct you'll get far more respect from your prospect than trying to lie to them and then find later down the line those issues come up and make you embarrassed. And more importantly, it could affect the way in which you're about to close that business with a prospect. It could put a barrier in that way. So don't lie, be truthful, be honest, and look at ways in which you can sell your service and what you offer. And if you do that effectively, you're gonna be in a good position to build long-term relationships with that prospect and hopefully make them a customer. So point number seven, and it's a key point when it comes to sales and really hitting the numbers you've got, is don't push the prospect into making a decision before they're ready to. I've done lots of research around one of the things that really annoys people when they engage with salespeople. And one of the key things I hear time and time again is pushing us. Now that proves a challenge for us as sales professionals. We've got targets to hit, we want to achieve numbers, but we don't want to appear pushy and there's that fine line between the two of how do you know when you're being too pushy versus when you're actually working to achieve your numbers. The reality is in sales, the key thing is have enough prospects in your pipeline and then do the nurturing that you need to do with your prospects to ensure that they come to the natural decision of where they want to be and how they wanna work with you. If the product or service you sell is actually gonna solve a real problem for them and really take a pain away for them, they're gonna to come to that conclusion anyway if you give them the right information, support, and details to support that buying process decision. But if you keep pushing and try and engage with them maybe daily, I see salespeople try and ring someone daily, that's just gonna turn that prospect off you and gonna make them wanna block you when they see your number on their phone or when they see your email, they're gonna press delete or block and it's not gonna help you hit the numbers that you have. Yes, look at ways in which you can see when the prospect is ready to buy, and I've got a great video that I can share with you around how you can see the buying signals with a prospect and then use them to your best effect. But also ask the right questions to your prospect to see when they're in a position to make a decision, but don't be pushy, don't push them into doing something they're not ready to do, because it's gonna come and hurt you later down the line. So point number eight on my list of what not to do to turn your prospects off you, and that's to not do what you say you will do. It's very easy in sales for us to go and have a meeting or to go and have a call, but then actually there is work for us to do as sales professionals to follow up with that proposal or to move that prospect to the next stage of the sales process. But the reality is we've got to go and do that work. We've got to do that proposal. We've got to arrange that demonstration. We've got to arrange that answer to that question that the prospect's made. And what will turn your prospect off you is if you take their time and use the information that you have, but don't give them the answers or don't do what you say you will do. It's gonna make the prospect think that they can't rely on you, they can't trust you, 
And if you lose that element of reliability and trust, it's going to have a massive impact when it comes to the final decision-making process that the buyer goes through. They're going to see, can I trust this person? They didn't deliver when they said they would. Maybe I should look at an alternative. Do what you say you will. And if you can't do what you say you will, tell the prospect. If you're going to be late because things happen, tell the prospect, I'm really sorry, I'm not able to get you the proposal today, but I will get it to you by Monday and then deliver to that. Do that, you're going to build up trust, reliability in your prospect's mindset, and it's going to make a big difference in you working with them, building great relationships with them, and making them a customer. So there you have it. There are eight things that I think you need to ensure you avoid doing in order to make sure that your prospects don't turn against you and don't turn off and don't want to work with you. These eight things are key things for us all as salespeople to look back on on a regular basis. I'm using my videos, hopefully it can help you close more prospects, gain more business, and hit the sales numbers that you already want to and know you need to in order to deliver the personal success you want. My name's James White, I'm the UK's leading prospect conversion expert, and I love sharing my videos, my thoughts, and tips with you on how you can achieve greater sales success. I'd love you to share the video with family and friends or comment on what you think. Are these the eight things that you found that turn prospects off you? Or there are other things that I should add to the list? Let me know in the comment section below. And if you like the video, please like it and share it. And let's make sure that we get every salesperson that really wants to develop and get the right results, getting those results. I look forward to sharing more videos with you really soon. And if you love what I do, subscribe to the channel and you can ensure that you get my latest videos as soon as they're released.